Today, I'm gonna go full wet palette. We're gonna discuss myths, facts, and important knowledge like how Squarespace, this video's sponsor, is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. If you need more of a beginner primer on wet palettes, check out my older video. All right, number one thing, how do you deal with paper curling up during use? Well, this all comes down to knowing how to set it up in the first place. Grab some baking paper or parchment paper as it's called in other countries. I got a roll of it under my desk for easy access. This isn't the stuff that comes with the wet palette. That paper is designed for heavy body acrylics. It's not porous enough for what we use, which is closer to soft body acrylics, nor is it wax paper. Wax paper isn't porous at all. Using wax paper on your palette is just about as good as using a hard palette. Cut the piece of baking paper to about one inch smaller than your wet palette in both dimensions. This means that there'll be about a half inch perimeter running around your wet palette. Bring the palette to the bathroom and run water over the paper with a straight edge. I'm using a piece of wood with my logo on it because I'm vain. Make sure to flatten out the paper. You want to get it good and soaked through. You also want to make sure that ultimately the paper is completely flat and bubbleless. If you were simply to just stick the paper on the palette with no moisture on top, it would curl because one side is wet and one side is not. Once it's flat, fill out the palette until the sponge is just over its absorptive capacity, meaning it's totally saturated and there's some visible water. Lastly, take a paper towel and dab up the droplets of water on the paper. These little droplets are like semi-invisible over thinning landmines. People often complain about wet palettes over thinning their paints and I am positive it's because they don't notice these little guys or a future issue we'll talk about. That's it. Your paper will not curl and will stay flat the entire time you use it and nicely hydrate your paints unless you let it dry out. Keep a bottle of water next to your painting area so you can rehydrate your sponge periodically. The amount you need to rehydrate depends on the environment you're in. The more humid, the less often you'll need to attend to it. But if you live in Arizona, you will likely need to top it off more often. I live in a fairly moderate area weather-wise, so I end up needing to fill it up maybe once every two to three hours. Now, I can already hear the anti-wet palette squad chiming up about how this is so much work to even set up a palette. And to give some perspective, I generally do this once per project, where a project is one whole display miniature or a squad of minis. For example, here's the palette from my recent Hawk Lord Space Marine I painted. Some paints stayed usable the entire three days I painted that marine. So you're not setting up your palette every time you want to paint. Depending on how often you paint, it's more like once every three to seven days. Okay, what about keeping your palette from getting funky? In theory, using distilled water should work, but over time I can see this becoming problematic with my habit of brush licking, and it's also just inconvenient. Tap water is at my disposal, distilled is not. My simple solution is to either put my lid on upside down or create a small vent in my lid. This allows for slow evaporation. Not so much that my paint dries out overnight, but enough that the humidity isn't as high, which leads to it becoming a bacterial playground. This solution is also nice because my paints don't get overhydrated overnight. They stay at the right level of dilution or close to it. You can also add a little piece of brass or copper to your palette, which helps deal with the bacteria, but does not eliminate it entirely. Now, what happened to your palette got funky and is staying funky? A few times now, I've washed my wet palette, sponge and all, in the dishwasher. Yes, the dishwasher. The heat obliterates any bacteria, it cleans out the plastic good enough, and it rinses thoroughly, meaning no suds are left behind in your sponge. For yet another alternative, you could just leave your wet palette open if you knew you weren't going to be painting within the next couple of hours. Honestly, the fact that the wet palette keeps your paints moist for an entire painting session, let alone multiple days, is good enough a reason to use it over a piece of trash, flat, hard palette. Don't worry, Wells palettes, you're okay. For this reason, I'm totally fine with letting it dry out overnight if bacterial growth is something that you're concerned about and the other options I mentioned aren't working for you. Before moving on to the next tip, let's hear a word from our sponsor. I don't have a personal gallery for my miniature painting art, so when Squarespace reached out to me to sponsor my video, I took it as an opportunity to use our platform to build a dedicated gallery for myself. A gallery like this is useful for a number of reasons. For those that don't know what miniature painting is, which is like half of my family, this shows them in a succinct way. Importing images and dealing with alignment is made easy and all the while creating a website that just looks awesome. 
It's important that your gallery show your work while also being functional and beautiful itself. If I need to see a bigger resolution of this mini so I can see the creamy blends, it's as easy as clicking on the image. If you want to set up a nice miniature art gallery for yourself, head to squarespace.com slash miniac to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code miniac. All right, back to palettes. Now, what about thinning your paint? Does a web palette do that for you automatically? Absolutely not. The best way to think about it is that a web palette maintains whatever level of hydration you pick approximately. But Scott, the paints on my palette are still drying out. Well, there's a few possible things going on. One, if you spread your paint out thin on a web palette, you're increasing its surface area and thus how fast it evaporates. No amount of moisture is going to save you. Paint that stays in a thick little puddle stays moist. <laughs> Why am I gagging much longer? It's worth mentioning that while your spread out paint may seem to dry after some time, you can still revive it sort of with some water. Two, if your room is super dry, paint will dry faster. The air is actually sucking the moisture out of your paint to reach some kind of equilibrium. Consider putting a humidifier in your room. That should slow it down. All right, what about metallic paints? People say you shouldn't put metallic paints on your palette because the mica flakes will get through the paper, into the sponge, and then into other paint, making everything you paint look sparkly. To test this, I put some red paint on my palette and painted a control swatch with it, and then dropped metallic paint directly into my sponge behind the red paint. I closed the lid and waited about a half hour or so. After that, I mixed up the red paint real good and painted another swatch. If we compare it to my control, we can see this is a total myth. It's pretty easy to come to this conclusion without even doing this test. As painters, we put paint on our palette all the time. How come we're not concerned that the pigments in my red paint will leak into the sponge and then color my white paint? Paint pigment is far finer than mica pigments in metallic paint. The pores on the baking paper are too small to allow for the passage of these kinds of particles. Now, if you're the kind of person who uses the sponge to thin your paint sometimes and you dip it in a metallic paint, I can't really help you with that. Consider not doing it. For some palette organizing tips, I often put paint on my palette and then create two different levels of dilution. One, a thinner one, and then one, the thickness that comes out of the pot. This gives me some options while painting. I can use a thinner paint or a thicker paint depending on what I'm doing. For some more hot tips, I'm a big fan of using the sponge in the wet palette itself to thin my paints in small quantities. It's right there, it's accessible, you can get a very small amount of moisture on your brush and change that dilution very minutely. That's going to do it for this video, guys. Hopefully that cleared up some confusion about wet palettes and using them. If you're curious about which brand of wet palette that I prefer, I have linked it in the description below. And, uh, yeah. I don't really feel like shouting out anything. Subscribe or die! And most importantly, don't forget to...